doing that. Very few want to. Their parents are some form of friendly stranger too, and why not? In the key hours of growing up, strangers have reared the kid. Now let's look at the strangers, of which you were one and I was one. Regardless of our good feeling toward children, regardless of our individual talents or intelligence, we have so little time each day with each of these kids, we can't possibly know enough vital information about that particular kid to tailor a set of exercises to that kid. Oh, some of us, you know, will try more than others, but there simply isn't any time to do it to a significant degree. So what we do is accept, and of course if we don't accept this, we're fired or harassed, we accept a state's prescription that's written in manuals. You do this first and this second and this third, and here you have a little attitude to talk to the kids. And the way the state checks on whether you've followed that diet is there's standardized tests given at intervals. If your kids do badly, it does not mean that they're bad readers or anything else. It means that they haven't been obedient to the drills the state set down. And they're marked for further treatment later on, or they're marked to be excluded from responsible jobs. Oh. <laughs> yes, Taylor Gatto. <laughs> you get Fat Cat's Hero of the Week Award. Yes, congratulations. You're sticking it to Lady Gaga, but According to the school system, you're insane. You need medication. Principal Alicia does not like you. You're a bad, bad kitty. <laughs> yes. If this isn't bad enough, if this isn't reason to think that schools are insane. <laughs> In the Toronto Star. This week, there was a giant article, a new survey came out that says that school, public school education, should start at conception. <laughs> yeah. The school board wants to be in your bed while you're conceiving your child, my children. <laughs> and forget going to school at age four. Let's try half. Six months. Let's try one year of age. Let's try, let's try zero years of age. <laughs> Said the survey in the Toronto Star. <laughs> Quote, I would come down from four years to three-year-olds in school, and then eventually two-year-olds in school, and then one-year-olds in school. Yes, quote, I had to move right down, said the survey, and I'd pay these, these early childhood educators, quote-unquote, very, very well. And if you were telling me we don't have the money, well, damn it, we'll find the money. And I'd make the point that if you don't find the money by increasing taxes. <laughs> Your children are going to be at risk for physical health issues. They're going to be psychologically unstable without the schools because the earlier schools can start educating your children, the earlier they can start indoctrinating them into the culture of death, the earlier they become your little monsters. <laughs> the states leviathan the state's little monsters the better off they're going to be the more surveys they write the better off they are going to be the more gps bracelets they have <laughs> the more schools are like prisons the better off they are going to be <laughs> the toronto star report also argues that schools not families <laughs> should become the center of Toronto should become the center of the world of a little child. It should become the center of the community for the family with the support and programs from pregnancy and conception on. <laughs> yes, Terry Bader would be very proud. <laughs> and Principal Alicia. And Lady Gaga. <laughs> We're developing a society because of all of these different toxins known to affect brain function. We're seeing a society that not only has a lot more people of lower IQ, but a lot fewer people of higher IQ. 
In other words, a dumbing down, a chemical dumbing down of society. So everyone's sort of mediocre. That leaves them dependent on government because they can't excel. We have these people of lower IQ who are totally dependent. Then we have this mass of people who are going to believe anything they're told because they can't really think clearly. And very few people of very high IQ who have good cognitive function who can figure this all out. And that's what they want. So, you know, you can kind of piece it together as to why they are so insistent in spending so many hundreds of millions of dollars of propaganda money to dumb down society. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lady Gaga thinks that, that bullies are insane. And yet, why are they doing surveys at schools extracting intervening in little monsters' lives, extracting information. <laughs> why, does, why is Principal Taylor Bader extracting $80,000 and stealing from students? <laughs> why does Principal Alicia ban rogue balls? This is all done in the name of equity. Yes, Toronto schools are big on equity studies because the more they know about your life, the more they can help you remember. It's all about you and us. <laughs> if the Toronto School Board was so concerned about equity, why do they do business with IBM Corporation Aww. and Dell Corporation and Coca-Cola Corporation and Apple Corporation? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. These aren't bullies. These aren't rogues. These are corporations very concerned with equity and treating your little monsters with respect. Remember IBM, those little barcodes on Holocaust survivors' arms, they're IBM barcodes. <laughs> they're early barcode numbers that were submitted into IBM Holocaust tabulation machines. <laughs> and Coca-Cola, yes, they're very equitable. Drink their, their sugar poison water, my children. Coca-Cola murders and assassinates unionizers in South America. <laughs> An Apple Corporation has your little monsters in a library working on a Mac computer. <laughs> They're very equitable. They, they, they put up suicide nets around their factories in China because so many people were murdering themselves just like Lady Gaga was her best friend off of the New York City apartment building in 2008. Yes, these <laughs> the Toronto School Board is very equitable. <laughs> Watch this video. <laughs> they just don't care. <laughs> yes, my little monsters. <laughs> this is why public schools are insane. If you go to a public school, you're going to be insane. <laughs> if you send your children to public school, you already are insane. <laughs> if you work at a public school, you are insane. <laughs> yes, while they preach equity, they murder people. They throw people into Holocaust camps in Nazi Germany. 
And they poison your Coca-Cola. They murder people trying to get better wages for themselves. <laughs> this is equitable. Fill out those surveys, my little monsters. Worship the culture of death by Lady Gaga. And while you do this, remember your principle is stealing almost 100 Gs <laughs> from you. And they're banning your little kids from playing with soccer balls like Principal Alicia. <laughs> Meanwhile, Farmers that try to sell raw milk to your little children to keep them healthy. They're being fined like Michael Schmidt. <laughs> $10,000 he has to pay for trying to sell raw milk. Healthy thousand-year-old liquid to your children. This is not acceptable. It is banned just like the rogue balls. <laughs> People forget that we are in a war here. We are in a war. It's a war between freedom and tyranny, my little monsters, yes. <laughs> we forget that we're in a war because we have been on the winning side for so long we've forgotten there's a battle taking place. <laughs> so raw milk is illegal. You can't buy it. You can't sell it. <laughs> but you can drink Coca-Cola. You can smoke cigarettes. You can drink alcohol. And don't worry if you don't know how much alcohol to drink. Because you can't figure it out for yourself. Your government has spent thousands of dollars. My children coming up with alcohol drinking guidelines. <laughs> yeah. And what do they tell you? They tell you that two drinks a day is normal for you. <laughs> yes, drink the alcohol. And surprise, surprise, the alcohol industry liked this. This new guideline that was put out by the government. In case you don't know how much alcohol to drink. The government tells you how much to drink. <laughs> Just like if you want to dig a hole in the ground in Toronto in your backyard. It's illegal. You have to get permission from your government. They even take thousands of dollars of your taxpayer money to put up posters around the city. Offensive Lady Gaga death worshipping posters that tell you you can't dig a hole without your government's permission. You have to pay them money to dig a hole on your own property. <laughs> Protesters picketed Apple supplier Foxconn's annual shareholder meeting held in Hong Kong Tuesday, accusing the world's largest electronics and computer components manufacturer of poor corporate ethics. Eleven Foxconn workers killed themselves this year, and three more attempted suicide on Foxconn grounds in China mostly from leaping off buildings. Aww. About 30 protesters picketed and some signs read, quote, workers are not machines, they have self-esteem. A cardboard cutout of Apple CEO Steve Jobs also made an appearance to get the message across that demonstrators are blaming Apple for the suicides as well. <laughs> yes. So what have we learned today, my children? <laughs> We've learned that Worshipping sex with corpses in public schools is healthy and good for your little monsters. Yes, Lady Gaga comes to Etobicoke School of the Arts and people praise her. <laughs> we know that public schools are insane. <laughs> if you go to public school, you are insane. If you send your kids to public school, you're insane. You're a part of the death worshipping cult of Lady Gaga and Principal Alicia banning balls and Principal stealing from your own children almost $100,000 to do goodness only knows what with the money. And if you don't know how much poison to drink, my children, contact your government and, and get a copy of those drinking guidelines that your taxpayers <laughs> the taxpayers pay for. And while you're at it, get permission to dig a hole on your own property. Yes, my children, Terry Bator would be proud. <laughs> Perhaps you'll even win the Terry Bator Spirit Award. <laughs> and you can send your kids to school at conception. <laughs> Okay, so that's it for this edition of the Animal Politics Show. Signing off, I'm Fat Cat. And remember, a completely enslaved individual requires the most sophisticated form of entertainment and death culture and matrices. A false world, a Plato's cave, a holodeck. That's it for this edition of the Animal Politics Show. <laughs> See you next week. Ha ha ha.